quiet! Welcome to the stage, the comedy of Ed and Regine! Hello! Hi. Hey, one more time for Abe, your cruise director. Come on, he's gonna work Whoa. hard for you all cruise. Wow, what a great crowd. I'm back there listening. Now you're all looking at me thinking, oh my God, if Tony Bennett and Klinger from MASH could ever have a child. <laughs> Look like me. <laughs> Thank you for that applaud. <laughs> well, I should tell you a little bit about myself. I'm Irish. Yeet. Actually, I'm Italian. I'm really Italian. Yeah. Uh, Mafia. Yeah, look, but sometimes you can't tell by looking. You know how I tell if someone's Italian? I go to a place that sells Italian cold cuts. That way you spot them right away. You do. Tiny guy walks in, you got him immediately. Hey, uh, let me have a half a pound of that prosciutto, all right? <laughs> non italian even easier. They go in and it's like, can I have a quarter of a pound of the prosciutto? <laughs> <laughs> I was actually born in the house, not in the hospital. Doctor was there telling my mother to push, put my, my sister to boil some water, my father saw it, threw a pound of spaghetti in there. <laughs> Born al dente. <laughs> I am an idiot. I'm an idiot. I am. I'm the world's biggest idiot. A couple of weeks ago, I went to McDonald's, right? I ordered from the value meal, you know, because my career is skyrocketing. And I, uh, <laughs> and on the hamburger, fry, and coke came to three dollars and seventeen cents. I look at my pocket. I got two one dollar bills and a one hundred dollar bill. So I hand the kid the one hundred dollar bill, and he freaks out. He's like. Oh, I can't take that, sir. I gotta get the manager. So the manager comes over and says, Oh, sir, we cannot take that bill because if it shows up in our receipts, we're all fired. He said, But do me a favor, please. Just take the food, no charge. Lunch is on McDonald's. And get this it works at Wendy's, it works at Burger King. <laughs> dining tip for you people. Last week, my horoscope said, don't put all your eggs in one basket. So I'm in the supermarket, I'm wheeling 12 shopping carts. <laughs> I bought a mango, $1.99 for one mango. I get to the checkout and the lady doesn't know what it is. I swear, she picks up, she goes, excuse me, what is this? Now folks, trust me, I believe honesty is the best policy, but sometimes something comes over me and thinks you shoot out of my mouth. Because I remember seeing peaches, 59 cents a pound. <laughs> So I just looked at her and I said, it's a peach. <laughs> this is what she said to me, well, it's kind of a funny looking peach. I said, well, that's why I'm buying it. I feel bad for it. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm leaving the supermarket, right? I pull out of the parking lot, I get on the side street, the car park, and I kind of brushed it against it a little bit. I scraped it, I totaled it, is what I did. And, um, <laughs> do you know you hit a car and there's no one around? Legally, your responsibility to even note on the car you hit. How do you do that? Ah. <coughs> oh wow, just total this Jaguar. Oh my god, there's not a soul around. I gotta leave a note. Hey, how's it going, pal? Boy, I wish I could see the look on your face when you do this. I'm out of here. So I'm driving away, right? I'm driving away. I end up on the ramp to get up on the highway. I'm doing about 40, 45 miles an hour. And I noticed something. Notice there's a ladybug out on my windshield. Now I get up on the highway, I'm a little faster, 50, 55, maybe 60, and the ladybug is still there. Now I'm thinking to myself, I wonder how fast I'd have to go <laughs> to blow her off. So I'm going, you know, 65, 70, 75, now the ladybug catches on to what's happening here. <laughs> She's looking through the window at me like, I ain't going nowhere. <laughs> 80, 85, now she's showing off, she's on three legs like, 90 miles an hour in a 65 mile an hour zone. I'm pulled over by a state trooper and he's furious. He ran up to the car, he's like, What's the hurry? So I was trying to get a ladybug off my windshield. <laughs> Swear to God, this is what he said to me. Why didn't you put the wipers on? Because <laughs> that's cheap. <laughs> it's 
and I don't know why, but I'm going to let you off with a warning. So he goes back to his car. As he does, the ladybug jumps from my windshield onto his. Yeah, then he goes back and he hands me the warning. He's like, okay, get out of here. I take off. A minute later, he comes flying by me 100 miles an hour. I'm like, you go, girl. <laughs> so I am an idiot. But I'm a happy idiot because I'm not alone. See, I know there's millions more out there. We probably have a few right here in this room. Let me check. Anybody ever try to start your car while it was already running? Oh, we're right in the front. Look at this. Yeah, the car knows, right? It makes that noise. <laughs> you do it. You do stupid things. If someone asks you a question you don't have the answer, you go like this. Why does that mean I don't know? Why? Why is that I don't know? Think about it. This is yes. This is no. This should be I don't know. <laughs> There's something else you do. Someone tells you something amazing, incredible, and you go, hmm. What does that mean, hmm? You think famous people in history did that? General Custer was surrounded by 10,000 Indians. Hmm. <laughs> General, what are we going to do? <laughs> Not only do you do stupid things, we all do it. We all say stupid things. It's, it's amazing what comes out of people's mouths. Last week, my friend said this to me. He said, hey, I quit smoking cold turkey. What does that mean? And then I had a guy say to me, you know, I stopped drinking frozen fish. <laughs> you ever tell the guys wearing a nice suit or a sport jacket? What does he do every time? He'll open it up and show you the label. You ever notice that? It's like, hey, nice suit. Oh, you mean this? Yeah, thanks so much. You never see a woman do that. Hey, nice skirt. Oh, you mean this? Thing? <laughs> okay, once in a while, but not enough. Anyways, I come up with an idea to stop people from saying stupid things because I say it's out of control and I say here's how we do it. I say we all get up in the morning, we get an allotment of ten marbles. You know those little round things you play with when you're kid, you get ten of them. And every time you say something stupid, you have to give one away. Then when you have no marbles left, you cannot say another word until the next day when you get ten new ones. Thank you, four people. <laughs> the rest of y'all thinking, I won't be able to get out of bed. <laughs> Trust me, folks, it's out of control. Last week, my friend said this to me. He said, hey, it looks like the sun's trying to come out. The sun's trying to come out? Like the sun's in the sky doing this? <laughs> well, the sun's not trying to come out. It's been out for four billion years. There's clouds in front of it. You're an idiot. Give me a marble. Did you say? Can I have someone tell you something, then they do this? You see what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? No, I can't see what you're saying. Can you hear what I'm saying? <laughs> Did that someone tell you they're trying to think? That's got to be good for three marbles right there. I mean, how do you try to think? Doesn't it just happen? If you tried to think, it would look like something, wouldn't it? You'd be like, hey, what time's the movie start? <laughs> Like someone talk to a ringing telephone, phone's ringing, I'm coming, I'm coming. They think that's gonna the person on the other end hear them? The hell, your name's home. Oh, wait, I hear him, he's coming. <laughs> and what about people that use their fingers to make quotation marks when they speak? Have you seen these six marble idiots? You know what I'm talking about? It's like we went to that fancy restaurant. I'll right back to my go, are you an idiot? <laughs> I asked my friend, I said, what time is it? He said, right now? <laughs> my friend actually said this to me. He said, hey man, I'm letting my hair grow. <laughs> like he could stop it if he wanted to. See him looking in the mirror going, that's long enough. And here's a true story. My friend just moved from New York to Phoenix, Arizona. He owns two parrots. He paid $600 in airline tickets to put parents on an airplane and fly them from New York to Phoenix. I say that's seven marbles right there, folks. Well, come on, they're birds. They what he did. He paid to put birds on an airplane. How many of you would pay to take your fish on this cruise? A couple of people up there. All right. I thought I'd have some fun. I said, why don't you just have them follow the plane? freaked out. He's like, oh, what if they got lost? And I'm like, they're parrots. They can ask for directions. <laughs> they didn't want to see that. A couple of parrots flying into a gas station. I gotta get the Phoenix! Ah, ah! <laughs> Idiots. I'm packing him on this trip. My friend's watching in the suitcase where the two zippers meet. So I zip it up and he goes, uh, where's your padlock? He goes, I don't use those. 
He said, why'd you do what I do? I said, what? He said, I use those little twist ties. I'm thinking, boy, that's a crime deterrent right there. Because I could just picture a couple of bad guys at the airport going, hey, hey, why don't we grab that bag over there? What are you, lunch? Can't you see it's got twist ties? We'd never get in there. Besides, they probably got all their jewelry in a Ziploc bag. Forget about it. To the airport, certain things you can't bring on the airplane. They saw this big red circle with a line through it. Gasoline power tools. How many of you wanted to take the weed whacker on this cruise? <laughs> people up there, all right. Then you get out of the plane, there's idiots everywhere. I was flying New York to LA non stop. Halfway through the flight, guy sitting next to me, hands out a word. Finally, he leans over and says, So, you going to LA? <laughs> Oh, I'm ejecting over Montana, you idiot. <laughs> and the flight attendants, you know, they come around. She said, sir, we're going to need your seat in the upright position for takeoff. Really? Is that going to make a difference? Is this going to change anything? Am I going to hear on the news a plane with 166 passengers crashed upon takeoff? 165 people survived. One man was killed. Apparently his seat wasn't in the upright position. <laughs> Then they make the speeches. Today our captain is Captain John Dawson. Who cares? I don't care what the guy's name is. Just get the plane down. Next time they do that, I'm gonna freak the whole plane. I'm gonna go, no, I'm not Dawson! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> and she said, uh, some of our flights are gonna take place over water, so they'll think your seat cushion may be used as a flotation device. Well, I got news. I know the plane's gonna hit the ocean at 500 miles an hour. I don't think anyone's gonna want to use my seat cushion for a flotation device. You got a point. Pretty much at that point, it's a Huggies. <laughs> and I'm sitting in my seat, I'm minding my own business. The flight attendant comes down the aisle, she looks at me and goes, trash. Hey, you don't know me. <laughs> That's why you know, so some point in the flight, you see the flight attendants would sit in the back of the plane and they never say another word. You know why? They're out of marbles. <laughs> and the pilots, they're my heroes. I love the pilots. Did you ever have a pilot do this? Uh, from the cockpit, this is your captain speaking. Where else should he be? <laughs> am I going to get out someday and hear this? Uh, this is your captain. Guess where I am. <laughs> And for a while there, the pilots were carrying stun guns. Good idea, try to get the real guns. I say, get the stun guns, give them to the flight attendants. You get that kid that's been screaming for like three and a half hours? <laughs> Nobody can shut it up. Is that the flight attendant going, let me see if I can settle him down a little? <laughs> oh, look, he's sleeping now. <laughs> and I gotta tell you, folks, I'm a white knuckle when I fly. And this is the deal. When the plane reaches cruising altitude, the pilot sets the seatbelt signs off, that's when I freak out. Because that's when people start moving around the plane, and I feel like they're going to throw the plane off. It seems like the pilot knows this, because every time I fly, somehow it's a sightseeing tour. I was coming back from Vegas a couple of weeks ago, the pilot came out with this. Ah, uh, this is your captain. If everyone on the left side of the aircraft will move over to the right, you'll get a wonderful view of the Grand Canyon. I'm the only idiot left on the left. I'm like, hey! Get back over here! I'm gonna make it roll! Then he banks it so they can get a better look. I didn't know that. I'm like, I know it! <laughs> then the plane starts speeding up, it's just going faster, it's dipping, it's climbing, the engines are getting louder, it's shaking from side to side, then up and then down. Then finally the pilot comes back out, he's like, Oh, this is your captain. I'd like to apologize for the rough ride, but I'm trying to get this ladybug off my windshield. <laughs> documentary with all the stuff that's going on. They had a documentary about snipers. They showed certain yeah. things about them. And they actually no. said this. They said, if you're Why, ever out and about when a sniper is supposed to walk no. briskly in a zigzag motion. Are you filming? That won't get you picked off, will it? Mine filmed it. She won't film it, right? They see the sniper up on the roof. Hey, look at that guy. <laughs> Stop talking. I was watching that TV show Cops, and there was a car chase. And the bad guy got out of his car and he started running on foot. And the two cops got out of their car and they started chasing him on foot. 
and they couldn't get anywhere near him. But the cameraman was six inches away from him. <laughs> Somebody deputized the cameraman. <laughs> Idiots. Snuggies, the blanket with sleeves. They're bringing it back now, different colors, different. Who's got one? Woo! What the hell are you thinking? That's eight marbles. All you gotta do is put your back robe on backwards. <laughs> Idiots. Watching all this political stuff going on, back and forth, who's lying, who's not lying, who did this, who did that. I don't understand it. I, I don't know. I'm, you know, I, I just watch the fun. That's what I do. How many people here are, are into that? They're watching it. Make a noise. Uh, How many people think Clinton's going to win? Make a noise. How many think Trump's going to win? Make a noise. Yeah! Well, I've been watching Donald Trump closely because there's a lot of talk about his hair. Is it a hairpiece? Is it a weave? What is it? I figured out what it is. It's not a weave. He's got one long hair growing out of his hair. And he just keeps twirling and twirling. Same way no rock in the United States. Same way. Same way. I was watching the situation room with Wolf Blitzer. Very serious. There's Wolf Blitzer in the situation room. I said, how do you think that kid Wolf? I want to meet the rest of the family. That's my son Wolf. That's my other son Coyote. That's my daughter Hyena right over there. I don't care, folks. Where you go, what you do, you will get information fed to you like you're an idiot. I was in Toys R Us. I saw this warning label on a baby stroller. Remove baby before folding. <laughs> oh, my God. And that kid's in the truck on me. <laughs> backwards on the ambulance, so when you look at the rearview mirror, it's the right way. But they think we're too stupid to figure it out if it's the other way. Would we not know? Would there be people driving going, honey, there's a big van behind us with flashing lights and sirens. What do you think that could be? I don't know. Let me check. It's an ethnologma. <laughs> Some nasal mist on the bottom, insert nozzle and nostril and squeeze. Well, thank you. Because <laughs> no, for years I've been doing this. <laughs> How about this one? Apply to affected area only. Like, where else would I put it? Like, hey man, what's that on your forehead? Well, it's preparation age. <laughs> I don't know, it didn't tell me where to put it. <laughs> it is. Watch an animal planet. The narrator said this. The anteater is six feet long, however his mouth is only a half inch wide. I'm thinking, wow, maybe he's sick of eating ants, but that's all he can fit in his mouth. <laughs> maybe he'd like a nice, forage, plump, juicy beetle, but he can't fit it. And maybe the beetle would know that, you know? He'd walk by the anteater teasing him. Hey, man, don't you wish you could have some of this? <laughs> Then you see the end, you're all aggravated. You're a fucking jerk, man. <laughs> I was watching a show on rodents. They had the world's largest rodent, a capybara, four feet long, 200 pounds. I'm thinking, what fun if I could ever get one of these? I put it in my basement, call up a pest control company. The guy shows up, yeah, what can I do for you? Well, I did, I got a mouse down in my basement. <laughs> He hits down those stairs, I hit that dead old fun for hours. Right? <laughs> I was watching two lions out on a hunt, and they're hunting down a herd of, get this, 10,000 wildebeest. The wildebeest gotta be totally out of marbles because it's 5,000 to one. All they gotta do is turn around and rush those two lions, it's over. But they don't do it, they're too stupid to figure it out. So what happens? The lions get one away from the herd, right? They start eating it, and, and, and then the guy said, here comes the vultures. Vultures come around. He said, uh, a jackal came up, and then a vulture flew around, and then another bird came down. He said, and this one is a guinea fowl. <laughs> Folks, I'm Italian. I'm not being comfortable with that. <laughs> but it was okay. They showed a close-up of the bird. He had gold chains and blue dragon suit. <laughs> Lion, I'm starving over here. Where are you going? Where are you going? Come on, where are you going? Come on, where are you going? 
Watch it shark me, narrator said this. If you were attacked by a great white shark, tap him on the nose. <laughs> Can you see that working? 5,000 pounds of eating machine coming at you at 40 miles an hour, and you try this? Yeah. <laughs> Shark, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> but I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, how do they know? How do they know that tapping them on the nose is going to work? How do they figure that out? What kind of science did they use? See, to me, I think it was lucky trial and error. I think they had a great white shark in a tank, a bunch of guys in bathing suits. Okay, Phil, come here. Yeah, you're going in first. Okay, Phil, now when you get in there, the shark's coming at you, you need to get a pinch his fin. Okay, Bob, you're next. <laughs> Idiots. And I'm the biggest, folks. I make no bones about it. I tell you right before, I'm the biggest idiot in the world. But I'm trying to learn, you know? Because there's things out there I want to know. For example, I want to know this. I want to know if you take the zebra and drag him across a price scanner, what would happen? <laughs> <laughs> Native Americans show up at a restaurant and they're asked if they have a reservation. What do they say? What? I want to know if a cannibal is on death row for his last meal. Can you order the warden? I want to know why we only use numbers one and two for bodily functions. Why don't we go further? You know, someone's coming out of the swimming pool, they got stuff dripping out of their nose. Hey, buddy! That's some number three over there. <laughs> Wouldn't that be great? You could speak a lot freer, right? Your boy ate something to greet me last night. There was five all over the bathroom floor. <laughs> I thought I was going to seven myself. <laughs> I want to know when Jesus was a carpenter and he hit his thumb with a hammer. What would he yell? <laughs> Ow! Me! <laughs> I want to know if you get scared half to death twice. Do you die? <laughs> I want to know if you can make a cow laugh with milk come out of its nose. I want to know if you're going to break out of jail. Should the getaway car be a Ford Escape? I want to know if it's possible to fly Virgin Airlines more than once. I wrote a lot of these folks. I wrote a whole bunch of these and I put them in a pamphlet form and I sell them at my concerts and I'm not allowed to sell them on a ship. And um, I have over 300 that I wrote and I'm still writing more. Hopefully I'm going to get up to 1,000 at some point. Uh, but so occasionally I'll spring one on my friend. And this is a true story. I'm not making this up. I want to share it with you because this actually happened before I came out here. We were driving, we were going for some coffee and uh, I says, I got one for you. He goes, What is it? I said, Why is it when sheep get wet, they don't shrink? <laughs> this is what he said to me, I swear to God, this is what he said to me, I don't think they shrink, I said, I think they rust. <laughs> now, I should have quit there, right, but I pursued. I said, well, what do you mean? He said, well, I think that's where steel wool comes from. <laughs> All of them. You're an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> All of them. Well, idiots, folks, and that's my message. But it's a good thing, not a bad thing. It's a compliment, not a put down. Because idiots of the world make like fun. You make it interesting. You make it happen, right? I mean, if everyone was perfect and, and, and never messed up, I think life would be too boring to be here. We'd all drive the same car. We'd all live in the same house. We'd all wear the same clothes. It'd be so boring. I mean, who, who'd want to be here? We are the spice of life. We are it. We make it happen. Think about it. You're having a bad day. What better way to cheer up than see someone trip and fall for no reason? <laughs> the lowest slow you've ever been in your life, you would snap out of it like this if you saw someone spit out their car window while it was closed. <laughs> <laughs>
to be like, wow, that guy's got number eight on his window. <laughs> I do believe you can learn something new every day. I think it's a great expression, but I gotta be honest, there's some expressions out there I don't quite understand. Like, I don't get this one. Hey, I'll be there with bells on. Well, you're gonna look like a fairy, you know. <laughs> Oh, wild horses couldn't keep me away. Yes, they did. <laughs> Where's Bobby? He didn't show up. I got caught in a stampede. You know. <laughs> How about this one? Drunk as a skunk. When's the last time you saw an inebriated skunk? <laughs> Am I supposed to believe all these dead skunks on the highway are really drunk driving accidents? <laughs> Bob pulled you over. What happened here? Officer, he came out of the woods, he was wobbling all over the place. I tried to avoid him, but there was nobody around. Look, I left a note. How about this one? Without any further ado, what if I want more ado? Can I just ask for it? And now, without any further ado, excuse me, I would like more ado. <laughs> Check all the nooks and crannies. Why do they two have to go together? The nooks and crannies. Did you find it? No, I looked in all the nooks. Go back and look in the crannies. <laughs> How about this one? Add insult to injury. What is that? <laughs> and you're ugly, too. <laughs> Well, you guys have been, uh, what can I say, man? You've been a, um, I don't know how to put this, but I mean it when I say this. You've been a, um, a car payment, and I appreciate that. <laughs> get to drive the Kia another month, so. I've had my Kia now about six months. I finally figured out what Kia means. Kick it again. <laughs>
this guy, uh, he thinks he's getting a few wrinkles in his face, so he goes in and gets some Botox treatments, and uh, now he's nice and smooth, he looks really good, and he's proud of it, so he's out onto the town doing his errands, and he goes into the bank, and he says to the teller, he says, uh, excuse me, sir, how old do I look? I don't know, 33? He goes, no, I'm 47. He goes, wow, you look great. He said, hey, thanks a lot, man. So he goes to the supermarket, he's checking it out. He says to the checking lady, uh, how old do I look? She says, uh, 32. He goes, I'm 47. She goes, wow, that's amazing. And he goes to McDonald's, get some lunch. And he says to the kid, how old do I look? The kid said, 30. He goes, I'm 47. He goes, my God, you look great. So the guy's real happy. Now he gets at the bus stop, he's going to go home and eat his McDonald's. And there's an 85-year-old lady sitting there. And he said, what the heck have I got to lose? He said, excuse me, man, how old do I look? He said, well, I don't know, I can't tell, but why don't you rub my shoulders for about five minutes, and then I probably could tell you. So she's giving him a massage, and the old lady's loving it. And he goes, well, what do you have to say? She said, 47. He goes, wow, how'd you do that? She said, I was standing behind you in McDonald's. <laughs> I must warn you, these are the family jokes. There's a bunch of family jokes on the CD. There's a bunch of adult jokes on the CD. So it's for, it's for all, all types of people. So you just have to screen them when you're playing. If you're playing if you're smaller kids, or if you're not, then whatever. So I'll give you one more. Um, here we go. All right, so this couple gets in a really bad accident. The lady's going to need facial repair, some surgery, some cosmetic surgery. So they go uh, have a consultation with the surgeon, and the surgeon said, well, he said, the best thing we can do here to make you look as beautiful as you were before is we need to take some of the skin from your husband's backside. <laughs> and the husband goes, I'm okay with that. So they graft the skin, they do the surgery. After the surgery, she looks better than ever. And she says to her husband, honey, I can't thank you enough for doing this for me. And he says, you don't have to thank me. I get thanks every time your mom comes over and kisses you on the cheek. <laughs> so that's this game. So I, I asked him, I said, excuse me, sir. Uh, which way is the back rack? And he became like a nine marble lady. He looked at me and went, I do believe you mean Baccarat. I don't know, something came over me because it shot right out. I said, well, you're wearing thick glasses. You must have cholera. <laughs> so then I go to the convention center where they brought the Miss America Beauty pageant back because I wanted to know why New Jersey has not done extremely well in Miss America Beauty. We've done okay, you know, but it seems like the big winners always come from out west or down south, and we struggle every year. And after my research, here's what I came up with. We don't pick the right women. That's the problem. Every year you watch it, you'll notice it'll go something like this. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss California. Hey, wait.
where I live. Thank you guys have been a great crowd. I'll see you outside. Thank you. Oh my god, that was so good. Jay. I'm Claudia. I don't know the words. Okay, see that? Dude, I got away with that. Oh, there is Ed Regine. No, I'm not. Where are we going now? Are you going to the room? Yeah. Uh, the room, or I thought you would just care.